undefined amount of new cost that's going to come on because of these regulations. So if we believe that that number, which you've not been able to give us any help on, is going to be bigger than the number you're already asserting is owed in the form of a refund, then while that one part of the equation might be a number, on the other side it's going to be more than balanced out. So what I'm trying to figure out is how can you have an opinion on the effect of a bill, the economic effect of a bill, when one of the biggest parts of the equation, y'all, you've told us, I think at two here, is this being the third now, y'all have any way to calculate that number? Right. Um, a couple things in there, Doug. The, first of all, with respect to the, wherever that number is, and I didn't say we don't have any way to calculate it, but what I, it, I said something along those lines, so I'm not, I'm not trying to argue with you. The, the point is this, um, there are numbers all over the map. There are the regulation, regulations or draft regulations, the DEQ will be tasked with defining or determining or recommending the best way to implement that. And now there are things in this bill that, that direct the SEC, the DEQ, to file reports on cost-effective implementation, the IRP, and all that's fine. We're, we're not objecting to those parts of the bill. But until those types of things are known, there's more certainty what the final rules would be. We, we'd really be chasing our tail trying to come up, to, to spend taxpayer money with consultants and experts and all that kind of stuff, trying to come up with that, with whatever that number may be. So I just wanted to make sure I was clear with you on that, not that we don't think it's an important figure. With respect to the impact of the compliance cost relative to the surplus revenues of utilities, I don't see anything in this bill where it says those compliance costs are going to be borne by the ratepayers during this period of time of the rate freeze. In fact, they are, they are, the, the rate adjustment clauses that are not affected, there's a specific rate adjustment clause, 56, 55, 85, E, I think, for environmental compliance costs. It's already there. Um, the, the, the provision I mentioned earlier, 56, 245, for emergency rate increases. So I, I, don't, I don't see where these compliance costs, you know, for purposes of question, I'll, Absolutely, can see. Yes, there will be some. They, it could be large. It might not be. I don't know. But I don't see anything in the bill that says Dominion is going to, going to eat those costs. The plant retirement piece, or plant impairment piece, is the language says as recorded per books by the utility, not as decided by the SEC. The utility will decide when it wants to record. They can wait and decide we want to record in 20, 2021 after the caps come off. And the point on that I've made too, uh, Mr. I think it was Mr. Weekly, Mr. Trini One mentioned the uh, plant retirements from the Yorktown or Chesapeake plant that were impaired with books. It turned out they actually were not retired right away. And the North Carolina Commission rejected a Dominion request to put those costs in its rates. They said the plant's still running. And, and coal plants or any other plant, even if they have to shut down under the regulation, they're not going to shut down overnight. PJM is responsible for liability. You've got to keep the lights on. So if coal plants or any other plant make a shutdown, it's, it can't happen overnight. It probably won't happen during this increased period. Uh, appreciate the question. I hope that. All right. All right. Uh, thank you.